Welcome to Gogo Daddy's Sweden. Out in the sun, the Zimbabwe sun, it's really, really nice to be here today with a special guest, Coach Xavier Buanya. You know, at Gogo Daddy's, we normally uh, interview young people that are making a difference in industry, in commerce, but Xavier is making a huge difference on the lives of young people. That is why we felt it is important to have a conversation with him. Xavier, how are you? I'm great. It's good to see you. It's good to see you smiling. You know, who is Xavier Buanya? So, Xavier Buanya is a, is a young man, married, He's, uh, married to one wife. Yeah. <laughs> and important, three, important. important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and and um, I, I have three girls mm -hmm. that I love so much. Um, above all that, uh, I'm a Christian and I love God. Um, I'm a basketball coach and I also work with Athletes in Action. Um, so my background is mainly of sports. Yes, sportsman. Yes. That's 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 what you eat, that's what you breathe. That's what you dream. Precisely. Yeah, I, I remember you when we were, when we were much younger mm -hmm. uh, playing basketball. Yes. So so yeah. Athletes in action. Who is Athletes in Action? So Athletes in Action is a tool yeah. under uh, Life Ministry Zimbabwe or internationally under Campus Crusade. So ideally we use sport to reach out to young people in the communities and to the societies to tell them more about Christ, to tell them more about God, as well as to build their character and also to build people that can make an impact in their societies. Are these youth from across the board? Yes, definitely they are youth from across the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, you are talking about impacting the, the gospel mm -hmm. to them, mm. but also trying to build them up. I'm interested in the building them up. Yes. Uh, how, how does that happen? Okay. So I think mainly when you look at it, we, we focus on two things. Also character building, mm -hmm. um, where we, we sort of focus on building the man, the total person, mm -hmm. and the spiritual, the spiritual being as well. Mm -hmm. So on building the character, we do a lot of mentoring. We do a lot of life coaching. Mm -hmm. um, we, we take them through the lessons because we know, for example, Basketball is just a platform to express their skills mm -hmm. and to express themselves. But there's more to basketball. There's more to life than there is to basketball. So we are also trying to prepare them just for now and also for life after basketball. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at a young person mm -hmm. that is coming to you. Mm -hmm and thinking how exactly would you help them we, we, without going into specific mm -hmm. scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, how would a young person that comes across you, Xavier, mm -hmm. through Athletes in Action, through basketball, mm -hmm. in their brokenness, how do they interact with you to a point where you can say, Right, you are ready to go into the world with or without basketball. It, thank you for that question. It is, it is actually a process. Uh, to some it can be a short process, to some it can be a long process. But the first thing that we do is we accept people as they are. Mm -hmm. That's, we don't judge people uh, from their backgrounds. Um, I can give you examples where we have actually had kids that have struggled with with drugs and all, we've accepted them as they are, 
but also we don't just end up on accepting them we also start showing them the importance of living a positive life a life that is uh, that is away from drugs yeah. a life that is away from alcohol abuse mm -hmm. and all so what we what we start doing is we start journeying with them uh, on the principles of life on what it is some of them um, sometimes I bring them into my house and then I walk with them uh, some of them have never had like for example they don't know what a family setup is like so when I bring them into my house I don't just tell them what a family setup is like I show them by the way I relate to my wife I relate to my kids so they know if they're ma if, if it's a boy or if he's a man they know what a man does when he's treating his wife or when he's treating his kids so they know how to also grow up in a family setup but we also don't end there we also start discussing the issues of finances uh, how to manage your finances how to manage your time how to also create goals in life and also to also create a vision so this is a process that we take with them to a point that they become men and they also go and impact the society mm. Yeah, I, I think it would be important for viewers to know that Xavier, as he works with athletes in action, is actually a missionary. Yes. He's actually a missionary. So yes. it, it is easy for him in his space to welcome young people into his home mm -hmm. from all walks of life in order to help them. Mm -hmm. I would wonder. To look at this, any specific challenges that young people face, yes. especially given the Zimbabwe environment where we are now. So, the, we we have a lot of challenges that uh, our young people are facing right now. Number one, uh, you find that most of them or some of them are coming from broken families. Either they are living with a single parent because the parents split or divorced. And then uh, the other challenge may be um, that one parent passed on and the other one is still alive or one parent is in the diaspora and the one other parent is, is around, is local. So our biggest challenge is because of that setup, we are growing up with, or we are, I, I have to work with a lot of kids that are broken. They don't know really the principles of life they don't know how to deal with issues in life. Some of them don't know how to be a fa how to be a man because they've never had a father in their lives. Some of them don't know how to be ladies because they've never had a lady in their life. So sometimes if there's a lady who has never grown up with, with, a, with a father, anyone who is coming into their lives uh, and shows just a glimpse of what a man can do to them, that person actually takes them away because he always sways their heart because that's the father figure that they're actually getting. And most of them suffer from abuse after that. So these are some of the challenges that we are actually, or the young people are actually facing as they grow. And some of them also the issue of poverty, the issue of um, even the poverty of the mind, and then the poverty which is lack of money. poverty can be a result of a dysfunctional society, yes. a dysfunctional environment. Yes. yes. Because I have always thought of poverty as, as being without physical things, material things. Mm -hmm. And you are telling me that you can also be without mm -hmm. in your mind and that can affect the way you look at the world. True, true. I think uh, when you look at mental poverty, you're also looking at the aspect of lack of exposure. That, uh, for example, there is a kid or a child who is living in the ghetto, 
who has never been to a town. Mm -hmm. So the way they view their world, the way they view life is different from the way that someone who has been exposed views life. So, for example, you bring in a, a child in the house and then they're actually shocked that you can wake up, a child, your daughter can wake up in the morning and just say, good morning, dad. These are things that uh, come from lack of, uh, one, dysfunction, dysfunctional society, number two, mental poverty, because these are things that they don't know that they exist. Maybe because they, they don't live with their parents. True. Child-headed household. True. Wow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that, that is a tough one. And, and you are saying around Arare there are lots of kids like that? Yes, there, 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 there are a lot of those. And you know, the, the funny thing is that you, you can't classify to say it's happening in the low densities or in the high density. It's cuts across the board. I've had two or three kids that, I, that I've come across and I've coached or mentored yeah. along the way that when they lost their parents, things became different. Mm -hmm. um, where they were staying with their parents and then they are taken in by the other parents or uncles and all. And then life becomes different and some of them end up staying by themselves or running away from the people that they were staying with. So all these are coming from dysfunctional families, dysfunctional houses. Uh, some of them, uh, it's not because there, is, there are no people that can actually house them, yeah. but it's because there are no people that can care for them. Ah. So, they have a roof of, over their heads. Yes. They are living with their family. Mm -hmm. But no one is taking care mm -hmm. of them. Yes. Xavier, that's deep. What True. do you mean? Um, a couple of years ago, I coached siblings. Mm -hmm. um, and after sitting down, because you could tell that there was tension between the two sisters. You know? mm. And then one sister opened up and said, do you know that in the past one year or one and a half years, I've actually never spoken with my sister in the house, but the parents do not know. But they are also living in the same house, mm -hmm. they are under the same shelter, but the parents know, don't know that there's actually no relationship amongst their children. They don't see it. They don't see it. They are it. too busy. They are too busy, and some of them don't care. <laughs> wow, wow. Because mm -hmm. what, I, what I've also heard from some children that have lost their parents is that, mm -hmm. you know, in our culture, after a person has died, mm -hmm. the, the people then distribute the, their earthly effects. Yes. Uh, take the clothes and give to cousins and sisters and siblings and everybody. Mm -hmm. And when they're finished with the clothing and the pots and pans, mm -hmm. they then say, what do we do with the children? True. And then someone says, I will take this one, I will take that one, and the children are separated as if they are items true true if you come across young people that have gone through that kind of thing yes i've actually come across um those challenges and i know of someone who's probably going into his fifth or his sixth home sixth home yes because they are just taking him from one house to the other and someone says oh you you play basketball and sometimes, you know, with basketball practice, we practice in the evening, sometimes yeah, we finish yeah. late, or games I finish late, and they say, you, you're you coming home late, you're doing this, and then he says, but I told you that I play basketball and you yeah. accept it. Yeah. But now you're saying, I shouldn't come home late when I actually gave you a warning. Mm -hmm. So then they say, no, we don't want to leave you. We live with you anymore. So mm -hmm. it's taken from one house to the other. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's so frustrating because I remember when I met him, he was at a breaking point, mm -hmm. you know. And unfortunately, especially with the African culture, you can't take a stranger in mm -hmm. uh, who's not your blood. It's difficult. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. But if I had an opportunity, if I had a chance to, I would have definitely taken that boy in mm -hmm. because he was going through a tough time. Mm 
mm -hmm. because he had lost both his parents. Yeah. So that grim picture that you are giving us ends. Mm. Yes. And then these young people, teenagers, mm -hmm. come across Coach X. Mm -hmm. Describe to me that first encounter. Wow. So that's that's something that is that's that's a deep question because number one, if someone just comes to you and you don't know them, you don't, you know, they've just heard about you, or you, they've never heard about you, they don't know anything about you, and then you are coming into contact with them. The first thing is, for me, I would want to know who they really are, and what they are going, what they are going through in their lives. Mm -hmm. But our point of meeting is not the questions we ask each other. Our point of meeting is on the thing that they love, mm -hmm. which is basketball. Yes. So we give them an opportunity to come and express themselves mm -hmm. until they feel at home. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that we have tried to create in our systems of basketball is to create a family setup mm -hmm. where if someone comes in, they don't feel like strangers. Mm -hmm. They just feeling like they come and they feel like they're part of the family. Mm -hmm. So to us or to me, that's what's more important mm -hmm. because I believe that even after they stop playing basketball, mm -hmm. there's still life after that. So the relationships that we build now is what takes us through. So the most important thing is first give them an opportunity to express themselves. Mm -hmm. And then we start building a relationship from there. When they are at ease. When they are at ease. Wow. Mm -hmm. And because what I like about what you are doing is, mm -hmm. is that it gives young people a sense of hope. Yes. It does. So I've gone through basketball. I love it. I'm transformed. For you as a coach to be able to say this young person has arrived, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. what do you expect to see? Um, I, I'm going to answer you with maybe examples along the way. Mm -hmm. uh, the desire for me is to see a total person. The total person that loves God that loves people mm -hmm. and that can transform the society mm -hmm. so the one thing that we we ask someone when they come this is a very important question that i ask anyone who comes into my system is the first question is what are you doing with your life mm -hmm. number one if you are not going to school where did you stop mm -hmm. or how did you stop is there any way that we can help for you to continue going to school mm -hmm. that's number one if you feel that, or if we see that you are already done with school mm -hmm. and uh, there is need for you to support you otherwise, the desire now, or what we have tried to create is, we are, we are still talking with a lot of people in our networks, that they also create job opportunities for these guys. So that they can also go home and buy bread for their families. We don't want to give them money to buy bread, but we want to show them how to buy bread. Wow. By, by, by creating opportunities, which are work opportunities. Mm -hmm. And then the ones that are in school, um, we give opportunities because sometimes we, we have partners that are in the US or all over that can just say, look, there's an opportunity for basketball scholarship. Do you have any kid who is able to do that? Mm -hmm. So those are opportunities they have actually started coming mm -hmm. uh, that we actually have Two, two boys that are on route mm. that are supposed to go to, to the US mm. on basketball scholarship or on a basketball on a prep or to a prep school. Um, this we, what we did is one of the boys I met him when he was 15. He was in form three mm. and once we started talking about life I said look uh, he told me his desire was to play basketball in the US and oh wow. So I said this is what you need to do. You need to work on your grades and you need to work on your basketball. So, number one, the boy is also a national team prospect yeah. here in Zimbabwe. Yeah. And secondly, he's supposed to go to, if it wasn't of COVID, they should have gone last year to the yeah. US to a prep school. Yeah. So he's actually en route to go to a prep school in the, in the US. So his dream is going to come true. His dream is, is going to come true. And if you, you were able to encourage him yes. to, to pick up on his grades 
Yes. Because I think a lot of kids that are coming from that kind of environment, mm -hmm. their performance, their academic perform performance also suffers. True. But now because he, he, he was seeing rays of hope, mm -hmm. he was able to work on his school performance. Yes. So that he qualifies. Yes. And at the same time work on his basketball skills mm -hmm. so that he qualifies. Yes. And now he's on his way. Yes, true. So this is just a, 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 a tip of an iceberg. There are some who probably don't go to the U.S. Yeah. And but they, we still push on their academics. Mm -hmm. We we have a lot of kids that are either in poly, uh, uh, Arale Polytech, or some are in colleges. And I I love it because we have actually one one guy who has actually graduated from the poly who is now an engineer. Mm -hmm. He we have gone through the steps of life with him, mm -hmm. and we are still taking him through the the, the steps of life mm -hmm. on how he can become a better man in the society. Mm -hmm. But we don't just end by them getting jobs. Mm -hmm. But we also create a system where when another young boy comes in, they are also coming in to mentor wow. those guys. Mm -hmm. So we have created a system where at Athletes in Action we train chaplains. Mm -hmm. So we have also started training them as chaplains mm -hmm. so that they also coach and mentor the next generation. <laughs> Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.